everyone. Welcome back to Evil Left Gaming, and we are continuing on with the Banner Saga. Okay, last we left off, we were waiting for Juno, and we fought some people, so let's get ourselves some more supplies. Um, yeah. And let's leave. Brook, please wait. Evan begs. She <clears throat> she said she'd just be here. We need her. You can tell he's terrified of leaving, as though he'd be giving up on Juno. All right, we'll wait a little longer. You tell Invin you'll stick it out a little longer, but you're not certain how long you're willing to wait yourself. Every day loss becomes more precarious. All right, so. A random assortment of people from the caravan confront you. Listen, says one. We don't feel safe here. I don't know anything about menders or whatever, but... We're going to leave, and I hope you'll join us. Looks like a couple dozen people, farmers and fighters alike, feel the same way. Let's encourage them to stay. They make it very clear they're not interested in discussing the issue. Taking their heads and setting out. Without rest, the caravan... Without the rest of the caravan ready to go... There's little you can do to stop them. You hope they make it, and that you haven't made a mistake yourself. Ooh. That hurt. Alright. We've waited. Er. Did we? No. And okay, now we've waited. I'm sure she'll catch up with us. Emmy looks out across the lake with a thousand mile stare. He says nothing. We've got problems, says Ivor. The whole place is flooded. We could try to walk past the muddy parts, but it'll be slow going. We could try to float the caravan over the lake, but we might get tipped or stuck. Or we could just go around the whole thing, but no idea how long that'll take. What do you think? Uh, we are going to attempt to ford the river. You pack everything up and take as much weight off the wagons as you can. Soon you're walking through ankle deep water and thick mud, hoping the rest of the caravan can hold out. The footing is sticky and slow, but the water isn't too deep outside the town. It takes a while, but you manage to cross the enormous mud pit outside Singer Home with an intact, if not cranky, caravan of people. Okay. I feel like I should have bought more supplies. Yeah, this is going to be bad. An 
old man sits astride an overgrown portion of the trail. You lost? he asks. He adjusts the leather strap on his hand and says, No, are you? He jumps up and shuffles toward the caravan, his tattered clothes revealing no weapons. Well, I've seen better, says the old man says, peering into the supply wagons, but I'll join you. He stands next to a fighter, throws his beard over his shoulder, and puffs up his chest. The fighter grins, and the stranger exhales, asking, What are we waiting for? Lead the way. Um... Why not? You're welcome to join if you can keep pace. Keep pace, the old man puffs through his mustache. No fleeter than old Onir and husbands, mind your wives. I'm cursed with a golden tongue, not silver. The caravan enjoys a good laugh as they start moving once again. As you're about to head off to sleep for the night, Ona pulls you aside. I have a couple of concerns I wanted to speak to you about, he says, in private. You find a likely place to talk. What's on your mind? How well do you know the people traveling with us? How many strangers are in the caravan right now? Who are you worried about? I've been watching folk since I've joined you. Their companions were scorg or they're loyal. I mean, it seems pretty clear that they die to protect you. I suppose I do the same. What about the Varl? I don't even know half of those warriors. Are you telling me they have no problem following a man's orders now, even after the thing that happened in Einertoft? I trust Ivor to handle it. He's fearless, I'll give you that. Look at him. He's run ragged. He can't be there all the time. What happens the first time the Varro don't want to do what you tell them? If Kruma give the word, I guarantee at least half would follow. Let's be honest. They could take this caravan by force at any time if they wanted to. Um... Hmm... They haven't. Doesn't mean they won't. They're not the biggest problem, though. There's a mender with us. A mender who pulls lightning out of the sky and tells us what to do and where to go. Myself, I think we looked out when his mender didn't show up in Singer Home. Invid, just the apprentice? What in the depths is his master capable of? Think about it, Rick. What do we really know about Invid? I heard... They were found practically dead in the middle of nowhere when the dredge started showing up. Then an enormous serpent shows up at Einertoft after tearing the world in half. Take one look at it. If it bolts. Suddenly they need our help instead of the Mender Council. How does that make any damn sense? Um, You make some valid points. Which you should have made on your own. I'm grateful what you've done to get us this far, Rook. But it's always been about trust. I think it's about time to part ways, so to speak. Nothing personal. Suddenly, you gasp for air when you look down. Onif is holding a knife buried deep in your ribs. Well, crap. Your vision blurs and blood fills your sight. You gasp again. There's a bird whistle and the camp becomes a blur of motion. Ona's fighters from Frostrider leap into action, cutting people down. As Oddly f turns to fire on the men, Ona runs her through and pulls the blade from her back without even breaking his stride. He drops like a sack of flour. In one clean motion, his blade then takes Ingle. In the throat before the boy can grab his shield, Onaf hits straight for Alette, who 
who freezes in unbridled terror. You raise, raise to your feet through enough pain, Ingle and Oddly for dead. Somehow you find the strength to cleave the nearest traitor in two, but you can't find the breath to shout. You think your lungs might be punctured. Onuf clutches a let, wrists <coughs> a mud the commotion, tosses her bow aside and pulls her into the deep wood. Her eyes meet yours across the campfire campsite. No, her lips say. Though you can't hear her words, a dozen men appear between you as Ivor steps into view, as fearsome as you've ever seen him. Holy crap. That just happened. Um, we're taking Ivor in this one. And, oop, oh, nope. I want Coomer. I want you instead of... Actually, no, we'll go with this. Okay, I want... I want Ivor to go straight for these people over here. Nade will back up Ivor. And Rook will back these guys up. Alright, let's do this. to impale this guy. Thank you. 
Yeah. Hmm. And we'll do you have you do bloody fail again. Really? happen. Good. Rook gets the final blow, which he deserves. Ivor tearing through the nearest bandit, but you're already hobbling into the deep wood where they disappeared, ignoring the battle raging behind you. In a haze of pain, you start to think you've lost their tracks. Then you hear Alette screaming in the distance, followed by silence. You tear through the trees. In a small clearing, Alette lies with her back against a tree. Her hands and clothes are covered in blood. She stares vacantly ahead, unblinking. Beside her is the body of Onif, an arrow buried in his right eye, as if placed there by hand. She looks in your direction and then at Onif. I killed him, she says. You damn right you killed him. Alette, are you... alright? You cringe as much from the pain as the apparent appearance of Alette after her bloody struggle with Onif. No, I'm... I'm... I'm not hurt. I had no choice. Dad, your chest. You're bleeding. Suddenly, she's at your side, putting pressure on the wound. 
I can, I can fix this. Where is my needle? I'll leave anyone. Ivor, I found them. Just as your sight goes black, you see, and then Ivor and Alette standing over you. He's going to make it? Your eyes open to the sound of Alette's voice. Normally, a wound like that. I only hope I did enough. I'll survive. Dad! Alette stops herself from hugging your banded chest, pulling your head to her instead. The words come out easier than you expected. Oddleaf? It's a good thing even if Ivan was here. She's going to pull through, though it's a nasty wound. We managed to kill most of those traitorous sons of bitches and the rest fled to the woods. There were a lot of people I couldn't save. You did everything you could, Invin. Nobody expects you to raise the dead. Invin frowns deeply, putting a head to his forehead. Why did Ona do this, Rook? He was talking to you right before it happened. He thought my leadership would get us killed. Utter bastard. All this time, we had no idea. Ankle kid a good half dozen of Onus men by himself. He told me Onuf was running Prosper the whole time. He left Prosper behind when he saw a better opportunity. Guess that relationship is over. Ankle was always just barking. Was just the barking dog you put in the yard to find out who your enemies are. It was no accident Onuf went after those of us from his gorg. He must have thought with us gone, he'd take the banner and the rest would fall in line. Or, at worst, they take all the supplies for themselves and leave the rest as dredge bait. We have to be more careful. We can't just let anyone join the caravan anymore. No, no nothing changes. We're not like him. You're a better person than, than I, Rook. None of this changes the fact that Bellower is out there somewhere following us. That swamp run Tigerhorn might buy us some time, but we've got to keep moving. Your body aches all over, but Ivor's right. The road calls. The caravan is already starting to pack up camp. Okay, we need to talk to Oddleaf. How's the wound? You notice Oddleaf winces as she raises to greet you. It's doing better. When I saw it happen, I thought for sure... Uh, well, I'm really glad you're... You would have missed me, Rook? She smiles. Without Envin... That's all you could have done. Instead, you have to put up with my crap a little bit longer. It still aches like you wouldn't believe, though. Oh, maybe you would. Have you, you took your stab? Or you took a stabbing yourself? I guess things could have gone worse. What do you think about the caravan? You mean, should we start kicking people out? That's a tough one. Usually, I'd be the first to give you a dirty look for suggesting it. On the other hand, I got a sword in my back. I'll leave things a moment longer before sighing. Don't send anyone away. Just make sure nothing happens to Alette. I'll let you get some rest. Okay, thanks take you up on that. You know, you're welcome to keep me company. When I'm a little more awake, I mean, I'll talk to you later. <laughs> yeah, that's what you meant.
Look who it is, still not dead. How are things, Rook? I never guess with you, Echo. I heard you helped drive off the traitors when Onif attacked us. And it leaves me wondering, what's your deal? I'm not so hard to understand. Why don't you try asking instead of telling? We could use a good fighter on my ankle. Could have killed a lot more with than without my hands bound, if that's what you mean. <laughs> so, Rook, I don't have to be your prisoner anymore? Are you going to let me walk around with my own axe and everything? That doesn't mean I'm not watching you. I can accept that. You're a good man. And we'll cook all that good. <laughs> You're not the only busy man around here, you know. You shake your head as Echo steps away from the camp. And we need to leave. We have no supplies. The trail of blood leads to a clearing where you find a large wounded Varl. He is gnawing on his shield, bearing at no one in particular, and occasionally slamming his cudgel on the ground. Not for the heavy bleeding, he leave this one alone without a second thought. We can help if you want it. In a heartbeat, the var was on his feet, swinging his massive weapon. You jump clear as the cudgel smashes through the tree trunk. Your priority scatters to avoid the falling timber. Once you recover, the var is long gone, leaving only a trail of blood, which you decide against following this time. Okay. That was weird. The villagers here are completely oblivious to the destruction that is coming. All we've seen is some dark figures far off, they tell you. Aside from a few young families, they reluctant, they're they reluctant to pick up their things and join you. Alrighty, I think this is a good spot to stop this episode. Thank you everyone for watching, and we'll see you next time.